pictures. Okay. So um, if you don't have a block, you're sitting up on some pillows. We're going to start in Vajrasana. So you're um, sitting up on the block and drawing your outer ankles in and just sit up nice and tall. Um, I like the elevation once again because it allows for the natural curves in the spine. If you've got tight hamstrings, it'll automatically tuck the pelvis under and flatten out your lumbar, lumbar curve, which in turn flattens out your other curves or um, doesn't allow for your natural curves. So just close your eyes, let your arms rest in a comfortable position. And you can elevate or sit up on two blocks if this is not comfortable, or you can even um, just sit in a regular cross-legged if this is just not comfortable. So deep breath in. Exhale, relax your shoulders away from the ears. Feel the expansion of the rib cage as you slide your head gently back. And just take a moment to pay attention to their breath arriving in the present moment. Being more aware of your breath forces you into the present moment the key to all inner transformation. When you are conscious of the breath, you are absolutely present. Conscious breathing slows down your busy mind. Breath is the bridge which connects life to consciousness, which unites your body to your thoughts. Whenever your mind becomes scattered, use your breath as a means to take hold of your mind again. Sometimes the most important things in the whole day is the rest we take between two breaths. So let's take a deep breath in. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of the heart. And bow your chin to your chest. Setting your intention to use the power of the breath to find the steadiness of the mind to allow you to focus and thus Send your attention in what you, in, towards what you want to create. Focus and attention equals creation. You can gently blink your eyes open, taking in the tips of the fingers, and inhale, stretch your arms around and up. Interlace your fingers and press your palms up towards the sky. And exhale, release your hands down. Inhale, arms up. Interlace your hands, press your palms up towards the sky. So being mindful of the breath, exhale slowly and steadily, emptying out, this time hands behind the back. Inhale, maybe even reaching those knuckles back to the floor. Holding for a little back bend as you inhale. And exhale, bring yourself back up, arms up towards the sky. Exhale and release, hands to the floor. Take a side bend. Over toward your right side. And up. And over toward your left side. One more time. Opposite interlace of the fingers, whatever feels unnatural. Press your palms up. Exhale, reach your hands behind you. You can interlace or not, just reaching the fingertips to the floor. Inhale, little back bend. Hold and breathe. Try to put a softness into the elbow so it's not hyperextending. And then exhale. Take a moment to walk forward. Tuck your chin in towards your chest and complete your exhale. And then roll up through the spine. Grab your strap. We're gonna take it as wide as you can. But before you leave it, lift up your strap, lift your arms up and notice what muscles are working. Sometimes we start to engage these upper trapezius muscles. 
So by taking advantage of holding the strap and pressing the strap so that you're pulling it tight or taut with a, um, a little bit of softness in the elbow, uh, you, you find that freedom in, in the uh, neck. So we're just going to uh, twist now towards the right side. Exhale back to center. Inhale and exhale. Twist towards the left. Inhale back to center. Do that one more time. Twist towards the right. Back to center. And twist towards the left. Good. Bring it back to center. Let's, um, let's do the side bend. You can hold the strap a little bit narrower and reach over towards the left side, maybe bringing a fingertip or hand to the floor, and then opening up your chest up towards the sky. Exhale, use those waist muscles to pull you back up. Take it over towards the right side, turn your chest up towards the sky. Stay connected to the block, firmly sitting on the block. Opening up that side body, press and reach like you're pushing that left hand up towards the sky and then bring it back to center and warm up the shoulders. So now the strap is wide, so this is the easiest, taking the strap behind you, opening the chest. Just doing that a few times before taking the hands a little bit narrower and trying it, that again. You find a sticky point right, out, right about just behind the shoulder. Let's try that a few more times. Inhale. And now we're going to take it a little bit shorter, so you're going to have to put a bend in the elbow and pull it back behind you and then back up and overhead. Bend the elbow. Notice what's happening to your rib cage here. See if you can keep it in a neutral position. And now hold it back and just do a few reaches, maybe um, just so that the forearms are perpendicular to the, to the ground. Lift up and pull down. Lift up and pull down. So we're kind of resisting by drawing the hands away from each other. And try to reach all the way up, arms straight and all the way down. Do that one more time. Hold in your cactus arm and again twist towards the right and back to center and twist to the left. One more time, staying tall, twist towards the right and twist towards the left. And I thought of it, I should have had you have the block on your head. <laughs> Just for a moment, try only if you have a soft block, not if you have a wooden block. But just to find, I forgot who was it that put the book on their head and walked around to show their posture. But this really does help for you to find that nice alignment, that lifting up through the crown of the head. So it's a fun thing to try. Um, it would be harder when we are moving. Let's take a quick stretch with your seat still on the block. Just reach your right foot forward and then just take a little bow forward, stretching through the back and the back of that right leg. You can relax the foot and then flex it. Relax the foot and flex it. Fold and breathe. If you have a block handy and you're down uh, far enough, you can let your head rest on the block, making it more of a restorative pose. Good. And then we'll bring ourselves up, bring your leg back, and just switch. Take the other leg forward. So try to center so that you're not leaning off to one side. And walk it forward. And just hold for a quick hamstring stretch. We're not really that warm or warm at all yet. Just um, so go into it gently if you want to rest your head on the block. And you can relax the foot and flex getting a little nerve glide in there as well. Good. 
One more breath, deep inhale, staying connected to your breath, using it as a means to help you focus. So I'm bringing yourself back up. And let's do, um, we'll come into this later, but right now, just to um, start to warm up the hip, uh, open up the hip flexors, just take a little lean back. So you lift your hips off the block, so the tailbone's now underneath you rather than in that, that arch position. And you can just do a little leaning back, trying to keep the knees on the floor and the outer ankles hugging in. A little lean back. Eventually coming down onto your elbows. You can come all the way down to a block that's underneath you. But like I said, we'll get there in a little bit. So let's come back. Let's reposition the blocks. Reposition the blocks at the front of your mat on either side. Just bring your hands um, right in front of the, um, just behind the blocks to come through cat-cow. Inhale, arch. Exhale, draw your navel in. Inhale, arch. And exhale, draw your navel in and up. Couple more times. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, and exhale. So walk your hands forward so that your hands are on the blocks on the lowest level so they're nice and stable. Just as we do, root through, on, if your hands were on the floor, root through the index finger knuckle, curl your toes, and come into downward facing dog. So this brings a little less weight into the hands. Hug your, um, hug your ribs in, inner thighs back, and still turn the armpits towards each other. Hinge forward into plank pose, and back into downward facing dog. So we'll just do a little warm up. So that using the um, strap and the blocks, you can come a little deeper into some of the poses. So take your right leg up, and notice you can step it right easily in between the blocks, whereas sometimes it's a little bit harder. Step back, downward facing dog. Bring your left leg up, square your hips. So pull that right hip back and step your left foot between the blocks, heart forward. So let the hips kind of lower down towards the earth. Step back, downward facing dog, right leg up towards the sky. Step it through. Drop your hips towards the floor and back to downward facing dog. One more time, left leg up towards the sky, squaring the hips, left foot right, step it through without letting the foot turn out and back to downward facing dog. So this time, right leg up towards the sky, step the right foot in between and lower the left knee towards the floor and inhale, rise up. Hug your navel in, root down through that um, right foot and the left knee and scissor those two spots together. And then exhale, release, hands come back to the block, straighten your back leg and pull bone arrow your right arm up towards the sky while keeping that left thigh, outer left thigh pulling up and back. Good, now release, right hand to the floor. Anchor your left heel to the ground, right knee into right bicep, and open up the other way. Now we have the support of the blocks lifting us a little bit higher. Here you can turn the block on its higher side if you want. Reach your left hand over the head. Hold and breathe. Cut and then circle the hand back towards the earth. Pivot on the back foot, bring it into downward facing dog. Left leg up towards the sky, step it to the left thumb, lower the right knee and inhale, rise up. Deep breath in. Hug your navel back. And then exhale, bring your hands back to the block, straighten the back leg and bow and arrow the left hand up towards the sky. So the longer arm gives you a little bit more flexibility in the twist. Keep pulling that left outer hip back. 
And then release, left hand to the floor, anchor your back heel, pull your left bicep into your, so that, that creates the external rotation when you press the outer left knee into the left bicep, and bring your right hand up towards the sky. Hold and breathe. You can reach that right hand overhead. Keep pulling the left outer hip back. And then release. Hand to the earth. Step your right foot up towards your left. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Sweep your arms around and up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Again, inhale. And exhale. So let's grab our strap again and draw and uh, make a a big enough loop that you're, it's about the length of your leg up to the just above the hip point. So we can um, practice some poses with the strap. So this will be a little bit of less flow and a little bit more alignment based using the strap. Um, let's start with a triangle pose. So you're going to hug the strap right into the outer right thigh and step into triangle pose. And you can then hopefully you have your belt strap so you can pull it to help, which is a cue outer right hip pulls back. Can you see how when I pull on my strap, my outer right hip is pulling back? And we'll hold the pose from there. You can either, um, if you don't have a long strap, you can just take a shorter strap and pull back here. Or hopefully you have the tension of the strap that will pull your right hip back and hold triangle pose. Hold and breathe. Good. and then bring it into need a what you need the strap to be longer for warrior warrior two so you need to loosen the strap but it, again it's pulling this leg down and the outer hip back and you'll feel how light you might feel in this variation of the pose inhale reverse and exhale cartwheel your hands down to your blocks just so you can loosen that strap, so let it fall off, come into downward facing dog, hinge forward into plank pose, and just start to sag the hips towards the floor, keeping engagement through the abdominals, press up and back into your dog pose, inhale forward, and start to, with control, release your hips down, toes curled under, shoulders draw back, Exhale, use your core strength to lift back up. And one more time, bring it forward. And to the earth. Downward facing dog. Walk your feet up. We're gonna take the strap on the other side. So we're just gonna to switch to triangle on the other side. It goes underneath the foot, underneath the back foot and into the hip crease. So. If you have the, po the strap so that you can reach for the end of the strap, then you can then you can adjust in the pose. So first triangle pose. So my strap is going to be a little bit longer because I was in warrior two last. I take the end of the buckle, end of the strap, and pull it back to help pull my outer left hip back. And also just kind of do a wider stance. My strap buckle is too far away. Right up in the hip crease, make sure it's right up in the hip crease. And then you find your triangle pose. Make sure it's pulling that outer hip back. Still rooting through the left big toe mound. Maybe reaching your arm over half. And then loosen the strap to come into warrior two pose. 
Pulling again, outer left hip back. Hug your navel in. Soften the arms. Inhale, reverse. And exhale. Cartwheel your hands down to the block. Let your strap fall to the ground. Downward facing dog. Forward into plank pose. Slowly let the hips drop towards the ground. Toes stay curled under. Exhale, lift up and back. Downward um, into plank and then into your variation of up dog. And exhale. Downward facing dog. Walk your feet up. Take your strap. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. Sweep your arms around and up. So we're going to do those same poses with the strap, but with the um, just reaching the arms apart. So we take the tension out of the upper shoulders. Let's come into triangle first. Right foot forward, right outer hip like the strap is there, pulling that hip back. So both sides of the waist are long without locking in the front knee. So we're going to hold the strap behind our head and pull the hands away from each other so there's no tension in the upper shoulder. In this case, we won't be reaching our hand down towards the block or the floor. We'll be using that top arm to lift up so that the, the body is really hanging from the top arm. And we're working our side waist here. Exhale, come up. Pull the right hip back as you lower. Exhale to come up, inhale. Good, lower down. Inhale. Exhale to come up, don't lock the front knee. So we're, the spine moves as one unit, take it slow. Inhale. And exhale. Warrior two, bend the knee. You can heel toe the back leg out a little bit further. Feel that the arms are light and really reach a little bit more through the back hand. We tend to lean a little bit forward in this pose. Hold and breathe here. Now let the um, back arm hang from the strap as you reach down and turn your chest up towards the sky. And let's flow right into triangle pose, straightening the front leg, pulling the right hip back, hanging from the top arm, bend the knee, warrior two, and into reverse warrior. Inhale. So take a moment to flow with the breath. Exhale, like you're moving through quicksand, each part of your transition, a separate pose. Exhale, warrior two, inhale, reverse. Good, take the strap out. Let's just pivot, come through a little flow. Let's take the blocks out of the way. Pivot on the back foot, plank pose, knees to the floor, chest and chin. Find a little baby cobra. Exhale, lower. Roll the shoulders back, elbows back, inhale, and exhale. Root through the index finger knuckle. Press up and back, downward facing dog. Just pedal out, bend right knee, left knee. And we'll just walk our feet up towards the hands. Then you can realign your blocks to have a little bit more lift. Lift through the shoulders. Exhale, fold. Tuck your chin in towards your chest. Notice your drishti and your gaze, keeping your mind steady and not pulling you away from the moment. Drop your seat, come into chair pose. Then inhale, bring it all the way up. So grab your strap and we'll do it on the other side. So we're gonna start with triangle pose. Imagining the strap is there in our left hip crease. and take the arms, the strap behind your head, create that tension, pull the outer left hip back with a soft bend in the left knee, use your right arm reaching up towards the sky, 
to support the pose. Pull your navel in, hollow out your lower belly. Exhale, lift up. Inhale, slow, pull your outer left hip back, hollow out your belly. Pelvic floor is lifting to elongate your spine. Exhale, lift up. Shoulders are soft because you're pulling the arms away. Even a slight bend in the elbow. Softish bend in that left knee. Pull your outer left hip back. Hug and hollow your belly. Feel the length through both sides. Good. And exhale to come up. Bend the knee. Maybe heel toe the back foot out just a little bit more. Lift your left belly. Drop your right sitting bone. So you should probably have a little bit more length in your strap here so you're not breaking at the wrist here, which I don't recommend. I'm just gonna um, find a little bit more length in my strap. So I can keep the arms, not here, but here. Okay, so press the arms away. Curl that left sitting bone towards the left heel and right sitting bone down towards the earth. Come into your right angle pose, pulling your left outer hip back, and then into your reverse warrior, hanging from that top strap, chest towards the sky. Now let's come into our flow, straighten that front leg, come into triangle pose, exhale, Hold for your inhale, and exhale, pulls you back up, bend that front knee, warrior two. Inhale into reverse warrior. Exhale brings you back into warrior two. Inhale, exhale into triangle. Pull your left outer hip back. Now are your frontal hip points towards each other. Exhale, lifting back up as you bend the knee. Inhale, reverse warrior. So if you can release the strap, cartwheel your hands down towards the blocks. Pivot on your back foot. Downward facing dog. Forward into plank pose. Lower your knees and sit back, child's pose, hands are on the blocks. Press up and forward, little chaturanga, and come up on the toes, and then come back. I'm just warming up the, warming up the um, triceps. Stack those two blocks together, reach them a little bit further forward. So the fingers are in line a little bit with the back edge of the block. And then just come to rest your chest on the block. You can do this from the knees as well. And then press back up downward facing dog. You can also stack one, this might make it a little bit easier, stack the two blocks up so you have the whole body to rest on. <laughs> Makes it quite easy. Um, and then push back up. It's the pushing back up that is not so easy. Bring it forward into plank pose. Chaturanga. Keep the collarbones smiling here. So nice long line of the collarbones. Heart reaching forward. Hug your elbows back. Lift your breastbone. Shoulders are back to press up and away from the earth. And just do that one more time. So again, you can do it from the knees. Lowering down. Gently resting, and then press into all the fingertips, and we're going to now do a tricep stretch. The so blocks, again, out in front of you. We're going to let our elbows rest on the blocks. You can even take a sh the strap here, because I don't want your hands in prayer. I want them as wide as the elbow. So if you hold on to the strap, that will help you to align the um, arms a little bit wider in that external rotation. And then just drop your hips back, pulling the strap so that the thumb lines up with the shoulder and not with the neck. Hold and breathe. 
keep turning the armpits towards each other. Stretching the tricep. You also want to press the elbow down into the earth and slightly isometrically pull it back towards the knees. Set and release. Let's try one more variation of that. Walk the blocks in front of you. Lowering down onto your belly. And uh, uh, blocks a little bit out towards the side with your elbows on the block and your head is going to come right in between. So you're getting that flexion at the head of the arm, which will help with your back bends, your pincha mayurasana, which is forearm balance. Hold and breathe. So the hands want to do a clap here, try not to let them. Good. And then release your hands. Press back into child's pose. Press up to hands and knees. Grab our blocks for camel pose. Walk them back behind you towards your outer foot. Inhale. Exhale, elbows back. Let's just roll the shoulders here for a moment. And then inhale, reach your right arm up and back towards that block. Left arm up towards the sky. Hold and breathe. Inner thighs spiraling back so the buttock stays wide. Exhale, reach up. And now cartwheel that left arm back, reaching for the block. Right arm up towards the sky. Hold and breathe. Now, if you feel comfortable, you can try one arm and then the other. So it's a little bit higher than if you had your toes um, tucked under, but you can also do that if you want. So don't let your hips bow forward. Inner thighs draw back, navel in. Right arm back, left arm back. Maybe walking those hands back, holding for your camel pose. You can to come out of the pose, lift one hand off the block, hand to the lower back, so you have something to climb up off of. Inhale, and exhale, sit back on your heels. Do one uh, other variation here. Step your left foot forward, and circle your right hand back towards that block, coming into another back bend. So it's like half bow pose and half low lunge. Scissor the legs together, lift the pelvic floor. Exhale. Step the left knee back. Right knee forward. Inhale, circle the left arm up. You can look for that block. Maybe place it back a little bit further. And inhale, come into your back bend. So if these are not comfortable, you just have your hand on the sacrum rather than resting on the block. Try to square your chest up towards the sky, hug your navel in, and as always, drop your tailbone. Exhale, and release. Come back to hands and knees. Inhale, arch. Exhale, draw your navel in. Inhale, arch. And exhale, draw your navel in. One more time, inhale. And exhale. So we're gonna come into a variation of pigeon pose. So right leg, you can sit up on uh, the block. So maybe present, we're gonna take the right leg forward, right leg up towards the sky, right knee in front of that block, anchoring the um, back leg and just prop, you're going to need to be higher, one block in front of you. This time we're going to take our strap towards the back foot. Coming into a variation of king pigeon pose. So um, if you, if the block, the strap is falling off, you might need to draw a little noose. I just wrapped it around my big toe. Flex the foot and start to walk yourself back 
into that king pigeon pose. So hug your navel in. Stretch your arms up. There's a deep pose, a challenging pose. You can start to work your arms back a little bit more. So there is a bend in the elbow because eventually you're trying to reach for the toe. Hold and breathe. So by all means, you can just hold one arm and maybe just pull so you get that, sh that um, quad stretch, which is equally good. And just hold it here with a strap over your shoulder. You don't want to overdo any of these poses. You don't want to feel any compression in your lower back. So we have the block here to support us and a block underneath the right hip. Hold and breathe. Take a variation that works for you. Good, and then release the strap. We'll have to try that on the other side. Let's come into downward facing dog first. Pedal out, bend your right knee and your left, or right knee and your left. Take a moment to hinge forward into plank pose, and then back into downward facing dog. Reposition the block to the other side. Left leg up high. Step it forward so that the left hip lands on the, the outer edge of the, the block, so you're a little bit more supported here. Other block to support that you're lifting up. And this might be more than enough here with just a little bend in the back leg. But if you want, you can put the strap around the foot. So maybe um, if you don't have a smaller, if you didn't uh, make a small loop to wrap the foot, you can just wrap it around. Oops. Those straps can be a little cumbersome, as you can see. I'm not going to wrap it around like I was planning, but just I have it around the ankle, my foot is flexed. Hug your navel in. Externally rotate the arms, lift the navel, drop the tail. And stretch, hold and breathe. So again, any variation here, that right inner thigh is lifting up towards the sky. It's a deep stretch. I don't have the kind of flexibility that um, I think that most people don't have, and you see so often with uh, yogis reaching back and touching their toes, although there might be some of you out there that can do it. Um, does it make you a better person? Does it make you a worse person? Inhale, hold and breathe. Variation, hand on the block, just holding, holding the strap, lifting the pelvic floor, Moving in a range of motion that works for your body. Good. And release. Block aside. Come back into downward facing dog. Forward into plank pose. Hug your elbows in. Heart is lifting forward. Upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more time, come forward into plank, either from the knees or from the toes, lower down. Take a block, bring it behind you with the block just resting on the tops of the uh, palms. And then breathe your heart forward and see if you can lift the block and hold. Maybe taking your inner thighs up towards the sky. You can even if you have two blocks, put a block between the inner edge of the foot. And then it's a very strong strength building pose for the triceps and for the whole back. As you squeeze the big toe mound, not so much the heel, the big toe mound into the block. So you maintain an internal rotation and the lift of the pelvic floor. Hold and breathe for four, three, two, and one. So I release the blocks. You can sit on that block between, if you had it between your legs, take a little child's pose. And then walk yourself back. So another common way to use the strap is to keep the elbows from splaying out. In your dolphin pose, in your headstand, 
It's also just a good way to work the proper alignment of the shoulders. So for this, we're going to take the strap and make it shoulder. This is too wide. Cut um, above the elbow, shoulder width distance apart. Okay. And we're going to just practice our forearm plank and our um, dolphin pose. You can also have a block between the hands. So that's um, and also a measure of your alignment is squeezing the, hand, the L shape of the thumb and index finger into the block. So root your elbows down into the floor, slightly squeezing the outer arm into the block, hard forward, curl your toes, and come into dolphin pose. Hold and breathe, hug your ribs in, and you can do a little shift forward towards the block and back, keeping tension on the strap, keeping your elbows and hands and index finger knuckle pressing down. Uh, for people who have a hard time pressing that index finger knuckle down, this is a great opportunity to hug the palms on the outside of the block, bringing it forward and back and forward and back. Lower to your knees, come up on your hands. So this is another option for chaturanga, so the elbows don't splay out to the side. Just, just do it to the knees first. You let your rib cage rest on the block and then straighten the legs. Knees to the floor, straighten the arms. So the elbows are pressing out into the block. Let your bottom ribs rest on the block, on the strap. Straighten the legs. Keep the shoulders, head of the arm bones lifting away from the floor. Lower and stretch back. One more time. Lift the legs. This will make it easier for you to feel those balance poses when you start to lift the legs up off the floor. And then lower, sit back onto the heels. Lift the arms. Let's take the strap so you can lift the arms a little bit higher. With the strap still, hugging those arms in. So you can press the arms out and turn the armpits towards each other. Hold and breathe. Good. Exhale, release. Hands to the floor. Just come right. You can let the strap come right into a forward fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Sweep your arms around and up. Let's just do a balanced pose with the strap. I'm going to unbind the strap for a second to come into warrior three pose. So step, step your right foot on the strap, ball of the foot on the strap, and keep your arms taut so the shoulders pull away from the ears. Step your left foot forward and then just press back through that right leg to hinge forward. Press back. Hug your navel in. Good. And bring it back. So this helps you stay in that Tadasana pose. The head leaders with the foot. Just do it one more time. Push into the, so there's energy in that back leg, that right glute is firing as you press into the ball mound of the right foot. That's the floating foot. Of course, the left outer hip is engaged, keeping you steady. Hugging the navel in and bringing it back. Let's try the other side. So ball mound of the foot, to engage. Inhale, chest stays lifted. This is a hip hinge, so we're pivoting from the right hip, ground through the right leg. Kick that left ball mount of the foot into the strap. So you can use the straps in our regular practice once you know how to use the strap. Um, I do sometimes cue that you can use the strap. Um, often the straps are used when you can't reach the hands together, like in a bind. We'll do some of that when we come down to the floor. Inhale. Exhale one more time. Come into warrior three.
So I hope you feel that this helps your alignment a little bit. Your hips are square, your left inner thigh is reaching up towards the floor. Your right leg is rooting down and your left leg is rooting back and the crown of the head reaches away from the left foot. Bring it back up. Okay, let's shake that out. Just uh, another shoulder stretch. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. So the most obvious bind would be for our Gomukhasana arm. When you reach the hands towards each other, just do it in standing. So the pull of the strap, when you're pulling up with the one arm and down with the other arm, you're also aligning the head of the arm bone. So as you pull down, now I'm pulling down with my left arm, the left elbow, and it's centrating the head of the left, uh, uh, head of the humerus, and lifting that right elbow up high, hugging your ribs in. So for me, the alignment feels uh, better with the strap. I can clasp my fingers, but to me, using the strap just feels like I'm getting more benefit from the pose. Might be different for you. Try it on the other side. Just work your, your hands comfortably close together. Pull up with the right, <coughs> with your, sorry, cue the other side. So up with your left elbow and down with your right. Maybe walking your hands a little closer together if it feels comfortable. And just hold for your inhale, drawing your head back in alignment, lifting your back ribs. So find your mountain pose here. Exhale, navel in. Cut and release the pose and roll the shoulders. Take your shoulder stretch. Inhale, arms up and back and up and forward. Up and back and up and forward. Okay, let's have a seat. I'm just gonna grab my water. Um, another pose I love to do with a strap um, is Janushir Sasana, revolve Janushir Sasana, because we often end up collapsing the upper back, but this allows us to keep our chest open. So we put the strap around the ball mound of the, the right foot, turn to face the left knee, and bring yourself, the, the left arm is going to hold the strap, your um, right arm will be on the floor, and then stretch that arm overhead and turn your chest towards the sky. So rather than collapsing the chest, you can open the chest here. Good. If you want to try reaching your hand a little bit closer, so my hand was here, coming into it again, reaching a little bit further down, crawling your right arm inside the leg, and then stretching that left arm straight, hold and breathe, rotating your chest towards the sky, and then release. Try that on the other side. Just switching the strap into the other side. Right heel in towards the grind, knee to the floor. Sit up nice and tall. Switch the position of the strap. So hold it with your right hand. As you reach your left hand, you turn towards that right knee. You can Got the block, but you can also use the block inside the leg to let your elbow rest on. Stretch your arms straight, turn your chest up towards the sky. Inhale to lengthen the crown of the head away from the tailbone towards that left foot. But and then bring yourself back up. Maybe trying to walk your hand a little bit closer to the foot so that you're coming closer to reaching the foot. You can rest your, your hand on the, the block, or if you don't need the block, your hand can rest or grab the Achilles tendon. Inhale, open the chest. Palm facing up with the left arm. Hold and breathe. 
Keep reaching through the arm, opening the chest towards the sky. Good, and exhale. Release. So let's make a big, big loop. We're going to do um, a few more poses to help align the hips in the neutral position. And let's try a quick boat pose before we... So a supported boat with a strap is a nice option. I'm going to screw this up, but... Okay. I kind of forget exactly how big a loop we need, so that's why we have the buckle here to pull on the edge of the strap. So it's a pretty big, pretty big loop. And it's just to keep the back lifted. So you straighten the legs. You can bring, I probably should try putting your um, hands to the floor with a bent knee and getting that strap just bra strap level. And then you can fold the strap as you bend the knees and then straighten the legs and hold your boat pose. Now this is really a lot less muscular engagement, but it does help you find, to find that lift of the heart and not the, the collapse in the lower back. So this is just to feel the shape. Eventually you want to build that strength. But, and release. So before we come into Phyllis's favorite pose, um, let's just do a Supta Parangustasana. So again, the strap is about the length of the leg. And we're going to take the strap around the leg that we're stretching. So I have the, ball, the strap around the ball of the right foot and the, that loop goes into the hip crease of the left leg. So hip crease of the left leg. So um, in an Iyengar class, they probably have you have two straps here. I just grabbed the end of my strap to tighten this. So by pulling on this hip crease here in front of the left thigh, I'm keeping my hips square and I'm not lifting my tailbone off the floor. And you, you won't be able to pull the leg probably as close to you. <laughs> with the control with the right foot and the strap on the ball of the foot you can press the big toe mound forward and you get that external rotation in the left thigh hope this is all making sense to everybody hold and breathe good and then switch the legs strap in the ball of the left foot and snuggle up the strap in the hip crease of the right leg and then bring it into Supta Padangustasana. I wish you could see the strap moving but by pressing the big toe mound forward and out I get that outer that length through my right side of the waist and that's what we're looking for so that we're stretching from the right space hold and breathe And now we're going to come into, uh, let's just do a quick, <laughs> coming right up for us. We're going to just do a little windshield wiper from side to side. Do that much uh, twisting for the lower back. You can just walk it out here, roll your knees to the left side and kick your right leg all the way out to the right. Roll your knees to the left side and kick your leg all the way out to the left. I'm just releasing the lower back. I obviously can't kick all the way out here. Hopefully you've got enough space. And then we're going to come into the Iyengar Padangustasana, which is the strap is going to rest. So again, see that my buckle is hanging with a strap so I can adjust. Um, the strap is on the ball of my right foot and I put the strap right behind uh, the head, just below the ear, line of the ears. Stretch and straighten your left leg. And you want, so it's just, uh, I would say just above the ears. 
but you want to make sure your head doesn't slip out and you want to find just the right amount of tension behind the right leg and if it feels like a support and even a little bit of traction behind the head you want to the head is off the floor and just balancing here and this pose you can hold for five to ten minutes uh, we don't have that luxury of time it's a restorative pose but um, I know it's a favorite, so I wanted to make sure we included that for those of you who, um, uh, who haven't tried it. Um, now, if you are using, if you don't have a regular yoga strap, the, uh, the other solution here is just to hold on to your towel or whatever you have and just pull the leg towards you. Still a great stretch for your hamstring. But remember that you had, just a moment ago, a strap here in front of the thigh and see if you can maintain that length there. Hold and breathe. Relax completely. So the head is just panicked here. You might be getting a little stretch behind the neck. And you can invert and evert the foot to bring a little bit of motion into the neck. Relaxing the jaw. And just coming back to presence through the breath. So we tried to squeeze a lot in here. Now it's time to just relax into the pose. Relax the jaw. Adjust if you're working here, so there should be no work. Just a completely supported pose. Maybe a little work in elongating the right outer hip away from you. But, and to come out of the pose, we take both hands to the strap, release your head, hug your left knee back in, and switch sides. Lowering your right leg. Option to keep the right leg bent. Strap just above the ears. And you can see I'm a little bit more flexible on this side, so my head's dropping to the floor. So I'm going to pull the strap a little tighter and find that buoyancy where my head is gently suspended. It's giving me just the right amount of tension in the hamstring and the shoulders are relaxed, the jaw is relaxed. Just a slight um, pressing away of that left outer thigh, so your left side of the waist stays nice and long. Hold and breathe. Maybe even closing your eyes and just connecting to your ujjayi pranayam. Allowing each whisper in the back of the throat to take you deeper into center. Breathing in, breathing out. Good, and let's take both those hands to the strap. Let your head come out of the strap. Put the strap to the side. Just point and flex the feet, little rock forward and back on the mat before we come into Shavasana. You can, like a fish, just do any little wiggling on the floor to release any tension in the body, any stuck energy, head rolls from side to side, and then just breathe. Staying connected to your focus of the breath and the surrender. Maybe 
be taking a moment to think about where you plan to hold your attention in this day. Reminding ourselves that focus and attention equals creation. Gently wiggling the fingers and the toes. Let's stretch the arms overhead. And then exhale. Walk that left knee in. Right arm stays overhead as you roll over onto your right side. Using the right arm as a pillow. Or you could use one of your blocks too as a pillow. And then gently make your way up to seated. Eyes remaining closed. Feel free to sit up on your block. Deep breath in. Exhale, hands together in front of the heart. And bow your chin to your chest. Sealing your practice in gratitude for finding the steadiness of mind to connect to what lies deep within. Connecting to our desires and our highest self. It's my honor to teach you the light in me, bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thanks for joining, guys. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you so much. You're welcome. See you again soon, guys. See you okay, next bye week. Bye. Bye, okay, next week. Bye. Bye. I really like the last restorative pose. I feel like it eases the tension in my neck. Yes, it definitely does. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Carolyn, maybe you could do a little bit next week with the ball, uh, oh, the sure. tennis, just sure. to demonstrate. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.